Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs>
how did you even find these guys and pull that off? I uh, so I learned how to play chess now from having. Ch I didn't know how to play chess. I just knew it was big and people watched it. You know, had these in big international tournaments. Um, and when I was looking at work with these guys, they already got a big following. Chess.com is huge. Uh, but I said, man, one thing they're doing different than most people out there, as you just said, right? It's no like it's a little small, quiet claps and golf. These guys are breaking it down. You know, you um, you feeling like you watch my man uh, Scott Hanson, uh, Hanson over there, right? <laughs> um breaking break it down chess and i think that that was the most interesting part to me is that the side pro the, the show the program and the side program the additional content all these guys um that's really really breaking it down and that's what made it interesting for me believe it or not man it's like top top five most watched yeah. chess.com is on the on the app and prize at first but then i started to watch as you said and I wasn't surprised anymore. It makes you feel like it's a it's a build up to a chess tournament and gives a strategy. Right. Yeah. And you know, what was the catalyst to start Lights Out Sports TV? Because, you know, we have so many different apps that are out there that are showing either fights only or professional wrestling or you know, UFC has Fight Pass and so on. And ESPN Plus has their deal with UFC and PFL that you started your own thing and brought even smaller promotions or like chess.com you know, things that would surprise the average competitive audience that need to be a part of this? I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, th there wasn't very many sports aggregators out there, right? Like, you know, I'm a big fan of Pluto and Hulu and, um, you know, Amazon Freebie is another favorite one of mine. Uh, and they got a bunch of stuff on there that's everything, right? Which is fine for the streaming service, but not for your average sports watchers, right? I mean, you got to really dive into a lot of these platforms, and find out, find which ones you like. And also, some of these guys don't have an opportunity to get to uh, uh, one of those streaming services. They, they got so much stuff on there, right? So their inventory is small. Uh, so you got some really good sports content out there that's just not really getting the eyeballs because um, maybe it's not a, you know, put up on a, you know, I guess on a higher priority list as some of the other stuff. Me, I think it's big. And Chet, like, you know, we just talked about chess. You, you would never think that chess is as big as it is until – you have a place to go find it directly instead of scattered here on YouTube or scattered here on, on a website somewhere else. So I wanted to aggregate everything. So again, people will come there and watch TNA wrestling on Lights Out Sports. They'll come there to watch Mad TV and end up watching chess. You know, I see it all the time when I got my weekly team meetings and, you know, I'm seeing this traffic of people come and, uh, like I said, watch wrestling. They'll watch, um, you know, outdoor sport, fishing, hunting or whatever. And end up watching, and that was the whole like premise of what I wanted to build. Because uh, before I got into this business, really, really start diving in, I would have never imagined that these sports are just uh, get get amount of traffic as, as they do. Right. Well, people forget chess, chess is military strategy, so you get to see the strategy breakdown and everything oh, yeah. else that goes along with it. It's very competitive. It is. It does have that competitive edge to it. And now with Lights Out Extreme Fighting on your own platform. All eyes are on you with a promotion. 18 just passed. I got to ask this. I know we're, we're counting too far ahead, but since you were number 56 with the Chargers, are we going to bolt up at Lights Out 56? <laughs> you know it, man. I, I'll, I'll definitely make that one uh, special. And then, you know, the, the funny part about what you said is we're having these events now every four to six weeks, you know, on a, on a normal basis. And what I would like to do is I would like to get to a point we can do twice a month. And and really, really start cranking it up. I mean, we had 14 fights uh, this past show, and we couldn't even get everybody on the card as we wanted to, right? Because, you know, it was almost a – see, we started at 5, but I think we got done around 9. So you're talking about a four-hour show, which is long. Uh, and, and so we're adding as many pros and even these amateurs as we possibly can, but we got so many guys we can't even get, get on the card. So uh, for us to have an additional fight a month would, would definitely help out with that. And now you've teamed up with Film Hub. Like, how did that come about for you? Yeah, you know, my, my biggest thing is um, we're going to be adding a lot of live sports um, over this next like sixty to ninety days. I would, I would predict before the year, the years out, uh, we'll have thirty, at least thirty live sports. And if, if I had it, you know, my way, timing wise, uh, like right now, the women's uh, uh, world championship, the softball championship is going on right now, live on Lights Out Sports, and we're watching. You know, a few thousand people, I think, are watching it right now. It's and it's it's in the morning. Right. So uh, in the afternoon, I'm sure to go up a couple more thousand, still keep kind of keep raising. But 
Um, yeah, the biggest thing is is really to have once you get these live sports there, a reason for people to come back and watch, right? Like last night, I, I forgot which movie I was about to watch for I fell asleep, but I was there watching court um court sports and I would pop down to the movie section. So yeah, we got 250 live uh 250 sports movies and documentaries that just went up on Lights Out Sports TV. And um we're we're about to not, uh, announce a really, really big partnership as well. Uh, Film Hub is great. Um, they got a lot of uh, stuff there. Uh, oh, I was watching the Lamar Odom um, piece, uh, his documentary last night on there. So, but we we got a lot of cool stuff coming. And at some point out after the live sports, we like to get into some originals uh, down the road. So it's uh, you know it's a process, man. But I feel I feel confident that we can we can be the leaders in this in this space. Right. I was just going to ask you if you guys were going to do something like ESPN Thirty for Thirty. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Man, you've been killing it with everything else. You got Glory Kickboxing. Glory, like, if you've never been to a Glory fight live, you are missing out completely on European kickboxing. Like, I, w- I was ringside in Denver. It was on my birthday when Raymond Daniels did that double kick, you know, the, the jumping side kick into the reverse spin. Yep. I was ringside for that, and I was like, dude, how are people not awake to Glory? And you're bringing Glory to everybody lights out you guys always put on incredible banger shows like people need to understand that it's not violence for the sake of violence you know there's a strategy to it and i think adding chess.com as well as lights out with glory and all these other sports will give that blend of um you know the the brutality with the intellectual aspect yeah and then one thing i figured out and this happened to me in the mid-2000s um i'll tell you how i got to nascar so uh in 2008 nascar had me to come out to be the grand marshal of the fontana race uh, um the richard petty's out and i watched nascar on tv growing up daryl earnhardt was one of my favorite um drivers and when i got to san diego i met you know jimmy um jimmy johnson who's from san diego so I had no idea how big NASCAR was until I went to uh, a race. I thought because, you know, it was NASCAR when I got there that not really many people would know who I am. You know, maybe some people, but not really. Um, They announced my name on the intercar, man, and the speakers, and it went, I mean, 40-plus thousand, 50-plus thousand people went nuts. It's like everybody knew who I was, and at that point, I knew that there was a lot of crossover. I feel the same way about, you know, like MAV TV is there. Um, there's a lot of football fans that watch, you know, a lot of motor, motor, uh, cross motor sports. I feel the same thing about combat sport, uh, sports like Swerve Combat is on there and they got a ton. I think they got PFL and more stuff on, on Swerve Combat, Glory Kickboxing, uh, the Strongman Competition. There's a lot of, of crossover in demogra- in these demographics. Um, and so we don't know exactly what somebody, like you may be having a new fan. I would have never thought. If you asked me this question a couple of years ago, I like checkers, but I had no I like I never would have thought I would have watched chess ever. Um, and I, you know, now we're saying people are coming in to watch these other sports and to watching chess. So that it was important for me, man, to just make sure we had like high quality partners, content partners, um, some really cool content, and then get people there. Because when they get there, we're we're seeing that not only they're staying, but they're getting interested in the stuff that they never thought that they would. Right. And, you know, when you retired from the NFL and relatively healthy, you know, with minimal injuries in comparison to other people that end up, you know, broken in CTE and all the other stuff that, that they go through. Um, when you sit there and you go into MMA and training with that and then professional wrestling and you bring it now through the, the Lights Out Sports app, when you sit there, like, are you looking at, you know, the UFL, the, the combination of US, uh, what was it, USFL and XFL? For their championship game and bringing that in or canadian football league or even arena football because i mean the nfl is the king of kings obviously but you know they have their strict deals and i don't know how that would work out yeah no we we um we're, we're definitely looking at all that stuff and i think that even we even with the minor league things right like the ufl that combined with the usfl um, you got a lot of these minor league systems. They got their own fan base. People forget, man. I get it that, you know, the, the networks, bigger networks want to go after NBA and NFL, Major League Baseball, and, and some NHL. Man, there's there's some minor league teams that have a rabid fan base. These, end, like, indoor – I'm talking indoor football right now is another one that we could possibly end up working with here shortly. Um, the A7L, uh, A, uh, A, F, A7L, the, the A7FL, yeah, 
Yeah, A7FL, great, great. So we're talking to those guys over there, which is, I, I think, as far as content-wise, they're up there as one of the best. Um, they're, I mean, the, these guys go out there and lay it out in the line, no no equipment, no helmets, and they are just smacking people left and right, which is great content. People love to tune into that stuff. So there's a lot of minor leagues that have rabid fan bases that just don't have a platform for people to see, right? So they have their own fan base, but locally or regionally, um, but if you put them on a platform where people can watch everywhere, you don't know. I, I made a joke um, last night during our fights. Uh, we had 420 people uh, in, I believe, in South Korea that was watching Lights Out Extreme Fight. Uh, we had, like, I don't know what happened out there or who passed what word or which bars or lounges they may might have been watching our fights. But I said, wow, this is crazy. So you give people the opportunity to watch it, and then you create new fans. Yeah, like I went to a lacrosse game. I know nothing about lacrosse. I still don't understand the rules, but I watched it and just the intricacies of the play on field is incredible. So, you know, if you give people that and then the A7FL for people that aren't familiar, like you said, it's it's minimal padding, you know, cup, shin guards, mouth mouth guard, whatever. But if you look at it similar, like the American version of rugby sevens, and then you kind of get get that gist to it, people will get into it. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we're we're probably a couple of days away from from them being on the platform, and I can't wait. It was a long time coming. Um, I think they uh, A7FL have done a great job, man, at, at building that platform. I know they're on some other platforms, but we're really excited to get those guys here. What about women's sports? Like, there's women's professional football leagues. Um, there's the, there was the Legends Football League, which used to be called the Lingerie Football League. Yep. You know, they've cleaned that up uh, in regards to try to get a more mainstream fan base. You know, are there going to be more women's sports like that? Because you already said softball's yep. on there. Yep. Talking to, I think, uh, I think women's sports right now is on the rise. Um, I think that it's it, women's sports right now is the hottest it's ever been, not just the WNBA, but women's sports in general. Um, they're getting more eyeballs than they've ever have, and you know, we are talking to the the women's uh, football league right now. I'm talking to them right now. Uh, my my folks over there, OJ, they they they're doing something great, and again, I think that they're another one. Um, that's going to be a sleeper that's going to do extremely well. Um, and those girls get after it. Uh, they they go out there and really, really handle business. So I'm looking at working with them more often. Yeah. Listen, you, you've pulled something off that only people have dreamed of, and I'm thrilled for you. And I'm glad that I can call you an acquaintance. And, you know, as, as our partnership, you know, me covering uh, Lights Out Fighting, Extreme Fighting, and coming out Lights Out Sports to be able to build this friendship with you because – you are absolutely incredible with what you do. No, I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. And then, too, I think especially, you know, just the support of, you know, people like you is is why it enables me to go out and, and some of these other more experienced people in this market. I mean, you know, I uh, spoke at the streaming stream TV convention in Denver, the biggest streaming convention. I was up there on stage with, you know, the guys, the leaders of Samsung and, um, you know, Roku and, and um, you know, Zumo was up there. So, um, you know, you you I'm in kind of a mix of of some of the biggest players in the world, and and so for us to get these uh the eyeballs and the traffic that we we're already generating, mind you, I haven't spent any money in marketing. You know, I think that's very important. Um, and what's going to separate you know Lights Out Sports TV and and everyone else is just having this you know frequent support of, of people like yourself, man. So it's always really appreciated. Well, all it took was one tweet for me to download the app. Yeah, that's, that's we 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 wanted to make sure that was that was easy to do too. And you know, for 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 us, right? I mean, we're on Amazon Fire TV and um, you know Apple TV and all this stuff. And people will eventually find us. We've we've only been live about a little under seventy days total. Um, but you know, people are finding us. You know, we had uh, on Saturday, I think, close to eighteen thousand people watching a fight. You know, after being live. Um, totally, uh, a little over sixty some days. So that that's big. We're we're seeing numbers double and and keep going. And as long as this keep trending upward and and partnerships and the support out here and the, the exposure that we're getting, I don't think um anything's going to stop us from kind of being in that number one spot. I think that we got to keep li listening to the fans and like, you know, I'm, I've been getting killed to get rugby on there, right? Because everybody below, so many people love rugby. And like when are you getting rugby on there so rugby will be up in a couple of weeks so we're, we're constantly man listening to um the fans and the people that's looking for the content but ultimately they don't want us have to consume it they got to watch it so we want to make sure that they have something to watch but more importantly have something to come back for right and so this begs the question when does lights out flag football start 
Hey, <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny you said that. Um, we talk about these minor leagues and stuff on the rise. And I think that flag football um, is, is something that's on the rise. And uh, the NFL is super smart, man. They're super smart realizing the 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 talk with the, the head stuff and concussions and CTE, the physicality of the game. You want to keep growing the sport and, and to have flag football under their umbrella, they're really smart. But there's some other flag football leagues right now that's building a crazy, crazy fan base. So that's another thing that we have. The women's flag football league is, is another one that's, that's gaining some momentum right now as well. You know, I always laugh when people are like, oh, that's a minor league sport. It's not a big deal. But like when you, as you mentioned, you know, how rabid the fans can be, especially in indoor football and arena football. I mean, there's a lot of love for that because those are fast paced, high scoring games. Indoor soccer has a huge fan base. Yeah, and the, and the crazy thing about it, I think that so many people are eyeballing the the bigger sports like the NFL and the NBA. They're forgetting that, you know, there could be a million people watching these indoor sports or minor league games, which is a lot of people. Uh, and so if you got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people tuning in at once to watch a game, that's a that's a big deal. And, you know, on the replays, the VOD content that we got on there, and a million people end up watching it, that's a very big deal. So you can't overlook those things because those numbers definitely add up. Right. And in regards to combat sports, will there be more judo, jujitsu, wrestling, the those type of events as well? Yep, yep. I had a meeting at, at our fight um, to add, add just that. More, more uh, definitely more jujitsu. We got some jujitsu tournaments coming. Um, we got flow racing coming, and obviously flow has a lot of jujitsu and grappling and wrestling, stuff like that. So um, it, it's, again, when you're talking about something, Something that's very niche with wrestling. Wrestling is a big community, huge. Yeah. Um, Jiu-jitsu is a, a big community, even though it's not the eyeball test of, of UFC and stuff like that, man. But these jujitsu tournaments across the country uh sometimes have a few thousand people there. And then if they are streaming, they got a hundred thousand people watching. So it's uh again, you can't overlook those numbers. Yeah. You know, as everything keeps growing and we go online, we're getting away from traditional cable. And, and satellite and everything else. I mean, there's still room for those places and people still enjoy it. But when it's VOD on demand and I can watch Lights Out Sports on my phone, Apple TV, wherever else, you know, how exciting is that that you're like, oh, I'm catching a flight in 20 minutes. Let me watch the first two fights of Lights Out Extreme Fighting from, from Saturday. And then when I, when I land waiting for my luggage, I can watch the third fight. It's it's cool. it's super cool, man. And especially uh, like we are talking to airlines right now about putting the app maybe possibly on on some of the airlines so they can watch it there while they're on the flight. But you know, a lot of people that uh, that get Wi Fi on the planes, where they're sitting there watching watching the watching the fights uh, or, or watching Lights Out Sports TV in general. So uh, we, my my number one goal for the rest of this year is just obviously traffic and distribution. Um, I think we got some really really cool partners that's that's coming on board. But I, uh, the second part is you, you got to be seen everywhere, right? I mean, we've got most of the big CTV uh, platforms right now. Uh, Vizio and Comcast and Zoom all go up this week, and that would be the last of, of the major ones. Um, and then after that, man, it's like you said, you want to you know, if I want people to be in the airports, be on the plane, to be able to turn on lights out sports TV. I mean, that's that's really the next step. Yeah, you know, there's a new sport that I well, it, it might it's new to me. Let's put it that way. I found out there's uh, E-Formula One. So it's Formula One with electric cars. And I'm yeah. like, I got to watch this because one, the sound is minimal. We're not going to hear anything whizzing by. Two, what happens when you need a recharge? Like how, how fast is the recharge? Or do you just change out the entire battery in the car? Just like lift it up and put it on a new platform. Like I got to see how that works out. Yeah, man. It, you know what's crazy is... Uh... There, when we talk about these niche sport, these sports like F one, we're, we're working with a uh, company that has F one package, right? And it's hard because F one is is a is a major sport. They're they're massively massive uh, company internationally, and you know there's a lot of hump uh, uh, things and that you got to jump through on hoops. Uh, so again, you're talking about the EF one, uh, EF one, right? Is that what yeah. it's that was? Yeah, That's EF one, yeah, EF one, EF one, yeah. um, and they are also right now gaining a massive uh, following in a, in a niche in a niche pl uh, place. So that's that's important to us because guess what? If they got you know a few hundred thousand followers or people to watch what they're doing, you're bringing a few th hundred thousand people to Lights Out Sports TV. 
um, that, you know, I would tend to 15,000 go off and watch, uh, you know, speed vision, right? I mean, that that's the kind of the, because uh, they're already into cars. You know, now, you, now, you, now you're jumping from one kind of car fan to um, another motor m- motorsport. So that that's the field that you want to create, right? You have to re- get some really, really cool partners and, and create it. But that that's another one that I'm personally liking it, liking to get involved in because it's smaller now. And I love being a part, part of things. It's smaller and then, you know, kind of backing and to watch them grow. Right. What would be like the ultimate get niche sport for Lights Out Sports TV? <sighs> um, I know we got Cornhole uh, coming up here shortly. Rugby coming up. Some billiards. Um, I'm a big fan of darts. I love, I love the, I love the darts uh, as well. I think we, I think we, we almost got everything in this niche. Uh, to be honest, there, there's a few. Um, yeah, I was watching Red, Red Bull, Red Bull TV uh, last night. We're, we're we're talking to them a little bit right now, and they had these these uh, uh little cars that they made out of uh, tree tree stump, and they were doing these races. And again. If you think about from the outside looking in, it is ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous, but they had thousands of people there. It was a car. It was a car made out of trees. It was a tree. They called it a tree something. It, the next car was made out of a toothpaste uh, bottle looking, you know, thing, and it was so just off the wall. But if you if you watch the programming on it, it had to have been about five thousand people there, or close to it. Right. So. They got a following, so those are the, those are the type of sports and things that we want. Because if people didn't like it, you know, almost five thousand people wouldn't show up. Right. Like I caught myself watching axle throwing videos the other day. Wait, which one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's another one. That, that's another one. I love. I love that as well. Yeah. You know, you're doing something right, and I'm so thrilled for you. You know, when you go back to Maryland, you know, and it, and you visit the high school because they got to bring you in to talk to the kids and let them know their dreams come true and everything else. What's it like going back and revisiting where you came from and showing the kids that there are opportunities out there for them? That that's it. That's the reason why you go back. Um, and it, and shame on anybody, man, to have a certain level of success and don't and don't get involved. Don't let people see you because somebody in that room you're going to inspire um, because they don't think it's possible. What helped me uh, really, really knew it was possible. My sophomore year, I met Le- LeVar Arrington. Um, his brother, younger brother, came and played basketball with me. And that was like really the first NFL player that I've been around. Um, then we got really close. He was like a, a mentor and a uh, brother of mine. I got a chance to work out with him, talk football, look at playbooks. And I was like, man, you know, I rode in. He had a G500, uh, Mercedes G500, the first time I rode in a car like that. And so I was like, man, this is, I can do, I can get this. This is possible for me. And um, again, I, I've never forgot those moments because I remember how it made me feel. So when I go back now to like Frederick Douglass High School, I got something coming up um, here shortly that I'll be going back for. And and just letting it, letting all the, the younger generation kids and then know that, man, like you can, this is all feasible. This is all possible for you to do, but you, these are the things that you have to do in order to get here. And um, coming, hearing it from somebody that come from your area, come from where you grew up at, maybe gone through, the same tough times, if not tougher times than you, it, it hits different. It resonates a lot different than with these kids now. When you hear it from somebody that um, you know, that it came from and you that it came from your area. Uh, because then, you know, sometimes people go out and they uh, you know, they didn't experience some of the things you did, and they're telling you so sometimes kids don't just don't listen. I when I was a kid, I'm like, man, you didn't have to go through anything I went through. It's hard for you to even understand this side of it. So uh, those kids listen a lot different. Sean, the website is lightsoutsportstv.com. You can download it on Roku, Apple TV. You can get it on uh, Vizio. You can get it on Amazon Fire Stick. Where can we find you and the company on social media if we want to connect? Yep, you can find me at Sean Merriman on on X and uh, uh, IG. You can find the uh, Lights Out Sports TV on Instagram and the Lights Out TV on on uh, X. Uh, then we're also the same same handles on um, TikTok as well. I love it, Sean. It's always great seeing you. I'm gonna be at the next fight. You know, this time this time I can actually make it. I'm gonna put it in the calendar for Lights Out 19. I'm excited for everything that you're doing. You've pulled off some amazing feats. In just 70 days, 75 days roughly since the app has launched, 
you've brought in an entire audience with you and not very many people could say that. It took CNN two years before they could get eyes on them. And it had to be with that uh, baby Jessica thing when she fell into the well. So nobody's got to fall into the well to watch Lights Out Sports TV. That's right. That's right, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for all the support, too.